113 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous period, a fearsome predator roamed the vast floodplains of North America. Dominating its ecosystem with its sharp claws and powerful jaws, it hunted and took down some of the largest prey of its era. This is Acrocanthosaurus. When Acrocanthosaurus fossils were first discovered in the 1940s, it was apparent that it was a large theropod. However, it wasn't until the 1990s that paleontologists found more complete specimens, enabling them to estimate its size more accurately. Based on these specimens, scientists estimated that the largest individuals could reach lengths of 11.5 meters or 38 feet, making them equal to, and sometimes even larger in frame, than some famous T. rex specimens like Titus and Stan. Despite being less robust and more narrow, Acrocanthosaurus was still an impressive animal. Although it was lighter than the T. rex, the exact weight of the Acrocanthosaurus is uncertain. Originally, paleontologists believed it to be around 4.5 tons, but recent studies have provided a weight range of between 3.6 and 5.5 tons, and some think it could have been even heavier possibly reaching more than six tons. The immense size of Acrocanthosaurus made it a fascinating creature given its existence in the early Cretaceous. It also made it the apex predator of its time. It was capable of hunting a mix of prey, including ornithopods, ankylosaurs, and even sauropods. Paleontologists discovered a sauropod with teeth marks on its bones, resembling those of Acrocanthosaurus, leading them to believe that this predator hunted sauropods specifically such as Astrodon and possibly the enormous Sauroposcidon. However, it likely only targeted vulnerable or younger individuals. The Acrocanthosaurus was able to take down large prey, and a large part of this had to do with its mouth, which was filled with numerous serrated and curved teeth that could easily cut deep into flesh. With a powerful bite that could administer up to 16,900 newtons of force at its maximum. This impressive biting power was due to its massive skull, which could reach up to 1.23 meters or 4 feet long which contained large jaw muscles. Despite its size, the skull would have been relatively easy to move around due to its narrowness and the presence of a larger opening in front of the eyes, which made it lighter than the skulls of other large theropods. This allowed the Acrocanthosaurus to easily move its mouth quickly when attacking prey. However, even with its powerful bite, taking down sauropods was still a challenge. This is where the Acrocanthosaurus's forelimbs came into play. Paleontologists noticed that they were well-built and highly muscled, with many of the joints containing cartilage. This suggests that the Acrocanthosaurus used its arms frequently, likely for killing. This belief is supported by the presence of three claws on each hand, with the first digit having the largest claw. So while the Acrocanthosaurus's deadly bite was certainly a useful feature, its well-developed forelimbs would have been essential in their hunting strategy. This could be expected as Acrocanthosaurus was an allosaurid, and most other allosaurids had large and robust arms, unlike Tyrannosaurids or Abelosaurids. Despite the consensus that the Acrocanthosaurus utilized its arms for hunting, the specifics of its role in the hunt remains uncertain, leaving room for multiple theories on its hunting methods. The most widely accepted theory suggests that due to the limited extension of its arms, the dinosaur would attack head first, latching onto its prey with its massive jaws, then use its claws to hook the victim and prevent escape. With medium-sized prey, the Acrocanthosaurus would pull the animal towards its body with its arms, while with larger prey, it would pull itself towards the animal. Once it was this close its relatively mobile head would be very effective. Some more creative theories posit that it could push animals over with its arms, but given its robust and well-designed legs for maintaining balance, it is unlikely that it fought against stationary prey. Estimates for Acrocanthosaurus's speed are fairly loose, but given its light weight for its frame it was probably faster than other species with a similar frame such as Tyrannosaurus. Speeds of 25 miles an hour are not unreasonable. In addition, if its deadly bite and claws were not enough, some paleontologists believe that the Acrocanthosaurus may have hunted in packs, as evidenced by the Glen Rose Trackway, which shows multiple theropod tracks moving in the same direction as 12 sauropods. However, not all paleontologists are convinced of this theory, 
citing overlapping footprints and a lack of evidence of changes in the sauropods' movements, which would be expected if they were being attacked. Regardless of whether it hunted alone this predator would be a serious force to be reckoned with. Another unique aspect of the Acrocanthosaurus was its elongated neural spines, which were located on its vertebrae and ran down its neck, back, hips, and part of its tail. These spines were over twice the length of the vertebrae to which they were attached, and while they were not as extreme as the spines of the Spinosaurus, they still garnered much interest and even contributed to the dinosaur's name, which means high-spined lizard. It is still not clear what these spines looked like in real life, but it is now believed that they would have had a lot of muscle packed into them, giving the dinosaur the appearance of a hump or ridge. Scientists have suggested various purposes for the neural spines, including communication, temperature control, fat storage, or even intimidation against rivals. These unusual spines, however, definitely did not inhibit the Acrocanthosaurus's success as the ruler of North America during the middle and late stages of the early Cretaceous period. The dinosaur mainly resided in Texas, Oklahoma, and Wyoming, though partial evidence of its presence has also been found in Maryland. The Acrocanthosaurus was able to thrive in a mix of environments, but it showed a preference for habitats close to water, such as floodplains and mud flats near the coastline of Texas. At the same time, Texas was experiencing partial flooding, leading to the formation of a shallow sea, which provided a suitable environment for the Acrocanthosaurus' environmental preferences. During this period, Acrocanthosaurus coexisted with various species, including well-known dinosaurs such as Sauropelta, Tenontosaurus, Deinonychus, and Sauropods, as well as members of Iguanodontia and Ovaraptorosauria. Non-dinosaurs were also present, including Neosuchians, mammals, fish, lizards, and turtles, but none of these creatures, particularly carnivorous ones, were close to approaching the size of the Acrocanthosaurus, solidifying its status as the dominant predator. Despite its position at the top of the food chain, the Acrocanthosaurus faced challenges. Some specimens show evidence of skull and neural spine damage, though the cause of this damage is unclear. Rival Acrocanthosaurus and very large prey, specifically giant sauropods, are the most likely culprits. Unfortunately, Acrocanthosaurus did not survive beyond the early part of the Albion stage of the early Cretaceous period. While it was once the king of the North American landscape, it eventually went extinct. The true cause is unknown, but changing environmental conditions, competition with other predators, or a decline in the availability of prey may have played a role. We are lucky to have specimens preserved to tell us about this amazing beast. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a great day.